What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from retail. Alright, this story's called, Old Guy Yells at Me While I Help His Wife Pick Out a Vibrator. What? So if the title in my post history isn't self-explanatory, I work in a sex store. The stories I could tell just from my year here could fill a book, particularly because I work in a rather methy small town in Canada. I also work late shifts most nights, so it gets interesting. Anyway, tonight I had two fine glossy-eyed specimen enter my store, and they set off a few retail red flags immediately. Oh, is it, is it just because they looked poor? <laughs> <laughs> so I kept an eye out, but offered my assistance and didn't bother them while they looked around. For some context, everything in my store is under a magnet lock, so I have to come over and unlock whatever product they are wanting off the hook. They asked me to come grab a few items off the wall and put them behind the counter while they continue to browse. As I head to the counter, I hear a telltale cardboard rip and see that the lady ripped a box of lingerie off the hook and was examining it, while swaying drunkenly, mind you. I walked over and gently asked for it back from her so I could tape the product back up since the box was all mangled now and she didn't want it. As I'm turning around to do this, she rips off another one. I turn and calmly say, hey, could you just be careful not to rip the merchandise off? I can grab anything if you want to look at it. She apologized immediately and slurred that she was just trying to see the back. I told her it was not an issue, probably just heavy drunk hands, so I took both items back behind the counter to fix. As I did this, drunk hubby walks up to the counter and raises his voice at me as his wife continues to look around. Side note, I'm incredibly upbeat and cheery. That's just naturally how I am, and it works great to de-escalate situations. So imagine me genuinely smiling and being helpful through all of this. Here's the cast. Drunk. Wife. Me. We're not spending any more freaking money here. We would, we would, we don't want to buy anything else from you. Because I asked her very nicely to be careful with the products? It's not like she did it on purpose. I'm coming back tomorrow to speak to you, boss. Okay, for sure. Feel free. I'm just doing my job, making sure stuff doesn't get damaged. Anything else I can help you with? My boss will honestly probably tell the guy to step off. No, we're leaving. Wife is looking intently at the wall of vibrators. Wait, hold on. I like this one. Babe, let's go. We're freaking leaving. No. She's looking at three different vibrators. Wait. No, no. Can I help you choose from any of those? I saw we're freaking going now. One more minute. Does this one recharge? No, not that one. But I do have this one over here that's 40% off and it's rechargeable. It comes in pink? Yup, right here. And waterproof? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll take that. So he stands with his arms crossed and brows furrowed while I grab the products for them. Then he has to fork over $350 for all the stuff they grab. I happily bagged it all and asked all the basic questions, followed up by my best wishes for a lovely evening, and smiled because he didn't say another word and I make commission. <laughs> I'm honestly really looking forward to seeing if he tries to contact my boss tomorrow. Oh, and I took down his license plate and gave 911 a little tip. There's a possible drunk guy in a big truck who just left the sex shop. Hey! My boss messaged me to let me know if dude calls and tries to complain, he'll be asked kindly not to shop at our stores anymore. My boss doesn't put up with abuse of his staff, and that's why I love him. Man, there's gotta be a subreddit called, like, Tales from the Sex Shop or something like that. I, I guarantee there's gotta be some weird, weird people going into sex shops, or just crazy people even. This story's called, Small Town Store Employees Are Smarter Than You Think. Okay, usual warnings, I'm on mobile, and while English is my first language, I do have disgra dysgraphia, so apologies in advance for any spelling and grammar errors I may have. I work at a gas station in a small town in the US. For many years, all of my life, the legal age to buy cigarettes here was 18, but on December 20th, 2019, the president signed legislation amending the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetics 
Cosmetic Act and raising the federal minimum age for sale of tobacco products from 18 to 21 years old. So almost, but not quite a whole year ago, the law was federally changed. So it's the law everywhere across the entire country, in every state, in every county. Whether or not anyone, including myself, agrees or disagrees with this, it's the law. And as a cashier, I have to follow it. Or not only could I be fired, I could even be arrested. That brings us to just last week. I'm having a typical work day, and all is going normally when this guy walks up to the counter wanting a pack of smokes. I forget which brand. I grab the cigarettes and scan them, then ask to see his ID. This is where he either had an extreme level of confidence or really thought I was stupid. The following conversation makes me think he thought I was stupid or not paying attention. See, in the state I live in, the ID of those under 21 will say on them in red letters, under 21 until insert random date. In the case of this guy, his ID said he was under 21 until 2022. I'm sorry, sir, but you have to be 21 in order to purchase cigarettes. It's okay. I'm from another county. They sell to me all the time. I'm sorry, but it's a federal law. There's nobody else here. Nobody has to know. I'm sorry. I can't help you. I hit cancel on my register and put the pack of cigarettes back on the shelf behind me. Dude legit stomps his foot. I've dealt with some Karens in my time, but so far no one beyond the age of 10 throwing actual temper tantrums. He leaves slamming the door as he exits. I watch out the window as he hops into his purple sports car. He revved the engine and peeled out of our parking lot as if being chased by demons, squealing his tires as he does. Not even a minute after he leaves, the store phone rings. I answer and on the other end is the cashier who works for the liquor store down the road. I'm probably too late because I had customers and I couldn't call right away, but I wanted to warn you about a kid trying to buy cigarettes heading your way. Drives a purple sports car, claims to be from another county, isn't actually 21 for two more years. That's him. He tried to bribe me. Yeah, he just left here. I already told him no. We have a bit of a chuckle and talk about the strangeness of it. Although it's not the first I've had to deal with underage people trying to buy age-restricted items, usually they give up after the ID check. Never had anyone still try to get me to sell to them anyway, knowing that I know they aren't old enough. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was like this whole like, uh, grace age period thing where, um, if you were over 18 or something, when they passed that, like, you could still buy, um, cigarettes, but like, it's up to the vendor or whatever, or the seller, I guess. Personally, I think it's kind of dumb to, to raise the age, um, because while I am against smoking and tobacco usage, it's kind of dumb because, I mean, you're old enough to vote, you're old enough to die for your country, you're a legal adult, you're, you're old enough to be tried as an adult. So, I think you should be able to kill yourself over a long period of time with cancer sticks. That's just my personal opinion. Let people ruin their own lives. It's okay. It's a free country. All right, this story's called My Store Got Broken Into. So this happened today last week, and now it's all over. I feel like it's a story some might enjoy. I work in a small kiosk in a shopping center where we sell phone cases and accessories. It's a slow Monday morning, and I'm walking in the center side doors near my store when I spot a wrist strap and pop socket mount on the floor. I waltz on through the door, thinking, ha, how funny would it be if we got robbed? Lo and behold, a security guard is waiting for me. My stomach drops, and I start to freak because the owners of the company have a habit of being absolutely terrible to staff when the smallest problem happens. I closed on Sunday. I thought I must have forgotten to lock something. I was sure I was losing my job today. I walked over and the security guard has a chuckle and says, looks like someone had a bit of fun here. Thanks, buster. I run around the store about to pull my hair out and start crying. The perpetrator has gotten to our store iPad store phone, all the coins in the tills, and some other miscellaneous items that weren't worth much. Thankfully, he didn't get to the safe, and so most of the cash was okay. First, I call my boss, expecting to have my head bitten off. No answer. I call the other staff member who is supposed to be working today. No answer. After I send them all texts, the other staff member calls back. I'm freaking out, and she's going, Are you serious? You're kidding, right? In the middle of the call, my boss 
lost rings me. I tell her what happened and brace for the, you're yeah, gonna have to pay for all the losses. But to my surprise, she told me to calm down and just write a list of everything missing. It was at this point, I was like, oh yeah, insurance is a thing. The rest of the day was mostly a blur. The stores around us all found out in no time and looked on their security cameras. We saw the thief in action. This is where I get confused. This guy was either really smart and knew what he wanted or really dumb and did it because he was on drugs or wanted an adrenaline rush. He started robbing the store at about 5.20 p.m., an hour and 20 minutes after the shop's close on a Sunday. He was walking up and down the center making little stops in at the store each time. But that's about where his intelligence dies. He opens all the tills and probably gets about $50 in coins from each one. He yoinks the store iPad, which is a very old one and probably worth about 70 Australian dollars. Uh, the store phone is some cheap Nokia that we recently got, probably worth 100 Australian dollars. He gets to the spare care of keys we keep in the store and this means he has access to everything. However, this clearly doesn't click to him. He could have stolen all of our name brand cases that are worth 40 plus dollars each, but instead he just focused on the tills in their cabinets underneath. He took some ring grip display stands, a medical box, and a bin full of iPad straps that come with a case we sell. He took two boxes full of our best-selling screen protectors, which was annoying, and then our notebooks? I don't know what this guy was thinking when he grabbed a book with flowers on it and a note on it saying daily store tasks. Worst part of it all was because the center was technically still open, people walked past and saw the cheeky bastard stealing but did nothing. If you see something that looks sketchy, please alert security. You'll save a poor retail worker from a panic attack. The cops didn't do anything because there were over a thousand break-ins over the weekend in the area. The dodgy as frick area. And our tiny store was at the bottom of the priority list, which was not surprising. The store itself was not very secure as it's very much due for renovations. The guy broke through most of our cabinets and barely even used the keys. In the end, I think this guy maybe got $300 worth of items and a bunch of retail workers laughing at him. You know what? You know what? They called Aristotle crazy, so why don't you just give him the benefit of the doubt? He is probably a criminal mastermind. That's why he's not caught. Huh? In fact, the dude in the video probably wasn't even the guy who stole. That was just a decoy. A game decoy. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, this story is called Persistent Check Casher. Okay, so this happened to me yesterday, but according to coworkers, it has been happening since Friday. Like my last post, this took place at the gas station job, and it pertains a certain customer determined to cash a check. It was a normal Monday night, which by that I meant 90% of our sales was alcohol since the store is in a neighborhood full of alcoholics. We often get checks written over the amount for cash back, so I usually don't think too much about it, so long as they have an ID on hand. Well, this one lady came in and with a small handful of things to buy, delivered me a pre-written check well over the total for cash back. It raised numerous red flags right away. Here's the thing. Our store is one of the few in my city that takes out of town checks, but we don't take checks from out of state. So if you have a check from Florida, you won't be able to use that here. Her check was from Minnesota, though her ID was of this this state. Second was that it wasn't a bank check. We will accept credit union checks only if the union is one from our town, but we don't take checks from out of town unions. I usually distrust pre-written checks. It's my own personal thing. I prefer to see the check written when people pay with one. It was over the total amount, on its own not that bad, but the check was roughly $115 over. 40 is our max for cash back. It was written in red ink, and unless something changed changed, banks can't accept checks in red because of something about their systems. Save for pre-written, all of those are grounds to refuse because store rules. But when I explained it to her, good lord you thought I'd hit her and then threw her dog off a bridge. She was offended and pissed and kept going on and on over how we always take her checks, how I'm so unreasonable, and being an incredibly rude employee for refusing. I explained to her the rules again and 
specified that our owners specifically told us not to accept checks that did any of those things. Oh, no, no, no. She wanted me to call the manager, claim to be best friends with the manager. It was past 9 at night. Our manager would have been asleep because she does the 5 a.m. opening. I told her, no, I'm not going to wake my manager up for this. If you claim to be such good friends, then go ahead and call her. She didn't, of course. At that point, she had gotten some others' attention in the store, and one of our regulars in the casino had come out and was standing off to the side to see if he needed to intervene. He was a very big guy, but very nice. Always steps in when our drunk customers get out of hand. I just told her that she needs to leave. Instead of leaving with her dignity, she threw the check at me and said she'd be back for her money, that she'll call the owner and that I can kiss this job goodbye, and I won't have any luck getting employed anywhere else with my attitude. Of course, she never came back with my crap. I informed my boss and left a note for the manager in the morning. Found she's been coming in at different times these past few days trying to find an employee who'd cash the check. Would have had better luck if the ink wasn't red. Wow! Good story. People who use checks, I'm always cautious of them too, because, I mean, what's the point of using a check nowadays? I mean, you have a debit card? Obviously, I'm, I'm referring to just like small purchases, like going to a store. But if it's like a bill, then who cares? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.